A conference of religion and public life has just concluded in Montreal, and several MPs announced that their parties were extremely resistant to any Christian message being allowed to inform, or they might argue, infect Canadian politics. Well, I mean, goodness me, you could have knocked me down with a feather. I'm amazed. I'm stunned. Oh, please. This is supposed to be revealing or shocking or a surprise. Now, NDP MP Joe Comartin, uh, Windsor Tecumseh, I think, he's one of the people who said this at the conference. Look, I've known Joe for years. He used to be on my, my old show pretty much every week. He's a nice guy. He's a hardworking and fair-minded politician, bright as well. But Joe, and I mean this with all due respect, your Catholicism is pretty lightweight at best. If even you were given little room for movement, imagine a serious and devout Catholic or an evangelical. They are treated so badly. Canadian politics likes its Christianity, all liberal and fluffy, you know, United Church, Anglican. Mind you, those groups are increasingly militant and extreme on subjects such as homosexuality in Israel, but you see it's okay to be hardline on those issues. Now, this is important. The concept of the separation of church and state it's American and not Canadian. And actually, it's not even that American. It's not in the Constitution. It's, it's just part of a presidential letter. And it's not supposed to protect the state from religion, but to protect Christians from an established church, meaning, in the American context, the Church of England. Look, the founding fathers, you see, were usually of British stock and heritage, and they had seen the intolerant Anglicans at work. How ironic that those same Anglicans are now so very liberal, but still so intolerant of those who oppose them. Now, shortly we're going to interview someone about a mayor in Quebec who dared to pray in public. And he's not alone. He was punished for that. And, you know, Christians have been targeted again and again. I know some of you say, oh, surely not. But it is true. We're going to show you a video of a group of peaceful Christians, most of them black, actually, being attacked and abused. The young woman doing most of the swearing has, and this is rather interesting, she just recorded a song about transport policy. I know, it sounds amazing. Uh, with the eccentric, and I'm being rather kind, uh, former mayoral candidate Sarah Thompson. Let's have a look. You're being, right. you're being disrespectful by showing up and spewing your jeans at a pride event. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to address you. Let me sing. Let me sing. Let me sing. Let me sing. I'm going to address you. You have on your shirt. You have on your You have on your shirt. I don't f Republicans. You're swearing and you're calling my religion. The Bible says you must judge. The Bible says you must judge. Did she not judge me? Did she judge me? You should not better than judge. You should not. Are you judging me right now? Yes, I am. You judge. You shall not judge, but you're judging me. And you're judging me. And you're judging me. Are you judging me? Now, that mouthy loon who was screaming at them, um, she'd screamed at me in the past as well. She's, a, I think, a deeply troubled person. She doesn't matter so much. There'll always be some crazy like that. But remember there, there was, uh, there was an assault. Uh, someone threw, it was probably, I hope it was just water, a bottle of water over those people. And the cops, the brave cops came along. What did they do? They threatened those people, not the ones who threw the water, but those who had the water thrown on them, and said you had to move. But it, it gets far worse than that. L last year... Four Christian churches were firebombed and attacked in the space of 10 days in Canada. Did you hear about that? No, probably not. We heard little about it. Christians are told to keep their religion at home, while Muslims or Jews are never treated thus. Atheists are treated with respect and awe by television interviewers. The same journalists treat Christian leaders with disdain and contempt. You've seen this as well as I have. You know you have. A woman came to see me oh, just a couple of months ago, and, and she was trying to hold back tears. They weren't false tears. She was deeply emotional. She told me that her son went to university, and in his first class, the professor asked if anybody in the room was a Christian. Well, her boy, her son, rather bravely put up his hand. The professor said, by the end of the semester, you won't be. And you know what? He was right. A teacher and 20 students against one kid is hardly a fair fight. You've seen some of those types uh, on this show, comparing Christian belief to faith in Santa or the Tooth Fairy or, or the Easter Bunny. Look, with me, however, they don't get away with such infantile digressions. Pictures and plays and films saying the most vile things about Jesus and Christians, while nobody would say a word, of course, about Muhammad, 
lies told about Christian believers, distortions of the truth, the forced removal of, of, of Christians, people who shaped the pluralistic and democratic culture in which we now bathe, suddenly told to get lost, get out of here. Well, getting lost is a particularly bad idea when you're in a tough neighborhood. And I tell you this, things have seldom been tougher than they are right now. I know that, that there are people who uh, have disdain for, for Christianity and Christians, and when you talk about Christian suffering, they, oh, of course that's not true. I can assure you in the developing world, it, it, it's, uh, it's a terrible state of affairs now. You read any objective study, you know how many Christians are being persecuted. But even in North America, no one's claiming that Christians are being rounded up somehow, but they're being pushed out of the, mar out of the public square and marginalized, and it's simply unfair. And when I said in the monologue, I, I stand by. Now, this situation in Quebec, we're going to hear more about with John Carpe. John is president of the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms in Calgary. Where else? John, this story of, of Mayor Tremblay, give us the background to it, please. Well, the mayor said a very non-denominational prayer. I've, I've read the prayer and it's, it's something that uh, a Jew or a Muslim would have no problem with. It's not a Christian prayer, but it, in a nutshell it said, uh, Almighty God, we ask for your wisdom and guidance and blessing today uh, as we deliberate during our, our council chambers. And uh, an atheist, militant atheist, uh, Mr. Simono. Uh, filed a human rights complaint and was successful in getting an order that the uh, the city council refrain from saying a little prayer before its meeting, uh, as well as the removal of a crucifix and a removal of the statue of uh, the Sacred Heart, uh, both of which have been in place there for decades. And they're also uh, in, in the uh, so-called na National Assembly. Now, just one moment before we go on. Um, so this was a prayer. Now, the context was Christian symbolism, but the prayer itself is is non-denominational and even ecumenical. Had, was anyone there complaining? Were, were people saying, no, no, the outrage, please, the humanity, you have to stop this. Were there complaints being made? Well, the court noted that Mr. Simono, who filed the human rights complaint, there were some other people who agreed with him. So, you know, it wasn't one individual. There was probably a, a minority of people that objected to their, to a, a non-denominational prayer being said before council meetings. Mm. In my experience, it's been that uh, if people don't like it, they're indifferent to it. They just don't really care. And uh, when I was a kid at school in those days, my golly, wouldn't now, I suppose, it was an ordinary state school and uh, there were Christian prayers in the morning and the kids who weren't Christian, they, they weren't screaming. They just stood there respectfully and, and, and didn't really listen very much. I, don't, see, I think we have to talk about harm caused. What, what is the harm caused by this this prayer that really just says, you know what, humility is a good thing when there may be a higher power. Well, I, I would argue that, that there's no harm caused, particularly because nobody is forced to participate in it. Uh, I remember myself in, uh, in going to public school as a, as a child and the, Our, the, Our, the prayer of the Our Father was recited, but there were some uh, atheist kids, Jehovah's Witness kids, uh, some Sikhs, and they, they were not forced to say it. And I think that uh, when it comes to religion in the public square, you, you do have to take into account what is the culture and the heritage mm. of a particular place. If 80% if of the Canadian public were atheist, then uh, you know, maybe it would be inappropriate to, uh, to, to have a prayer um, before council meetings, perhaps. Right. But you, you can't separate these things from the, the culture, the oh. history, the tradition, and the heritage. Now, how did the court rule? The court fortunately overturned the Human Rights Tribunal, which had ordered the mayor and city council to pay $30,000. Yeah, just let me ask you, how, how did they come? Uh, the Human Rights Human Commission, rights. which was a very, very low threshold, a lot of non-lawyers, uh, completely appointed, not elected, uh, no due process. They not only say it's got to go, but they say you have to pay $30,000. What's that for? Well, for the, what the Human Rights Tribunal deemed to be a violation of his right to religious freedom, <laughs> even though he wasn't compelled to say the prayer, uh, a violation of his equality rights, although that begs the question, you know, what kind of equality and, and what about the 70, 80, 90% of people who do believe in the existence of a higher power? 
So the, the but yeah, human okay. rights tribunals they, they have an agenda and and they're not they're not bound by law. No, so thirty thousand dollars. They claim to be. Okay, so if I'm really 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 angry, maybe I could get fifty thousand dollars, which would be quite nice. But then it goes to a proper court with proper lawyers and due process and appeal, and they say, uh, sorry, you're wrong. They said that it's it's not a violation of the atheist's right that uh, a prayer is said before. Uh, council meetings and in particular I think the court would have ruled differently if if the prayer itself was a prayer to Jesus Christ or or you know hypothetically a prayer to Allah uh, then you know th there there would be a, a problem there but it, because of the the prayer was was to Almighty God and asking for wisdom and guidance and nothing more no references to uh, uh, to, to Christianity or to any other religion the court ruled that the prayer is just fine and further the this the crucifix and the statue of the Sacred Heart, uh, the court said that they, they are historical and cultural relics. Uh, they're, they're pieces of art, but they, they're no longer religious freedom. Uh, sorry, they're no longer religious symbols. And I, yeah. I think the court is, is making an accurate observation on Quebec society in, in, yeah. in that regard. Tragically, I think it probably is that uh, they represent Quebec and its history and traditions rather than what they're really supposed to be, which is uh, part of the, the essence of... Catholic Christianity. However, uh, people who criticize judges in the courts, yes, they can be annoying, but they're way better than the human rights alternative, which are increasingly just a, a kangaroo court and, a, and just a running joke and an open wound and any other things I can say that are quite nasty. Thank you, my friend. Always a huge pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for the invitation.